there's a long and storied suggestion that in fact the two are somehow linked, that is madness and unique intelligence or abilities. What's the history and is it, is it provable? Uh, well, it certainly is a long history. I mean, long before the Greeks, um, the observation was made that people, particularly in the arts, had a higher rate of madness and melancholia. And people wrote about it extensively, talked about it, philosophers did, um, the old psychology um, observers. But what's been shown is speculation, people made observations, people studied it somewhat, but it's only been in the recent years, the last 20 or 30 years, where people have really looked at it systematically. And the answer is in uh, very sh quickly is yes, there is a, a tremendous uh, background and, and there are about 20 or 30 studies now showing that a wide variety of different kinds of studies showing a, a particularly elevated rate of mood disorders in highly creative people. So does creativity cause the madness or does madness cause creativity? Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I think some artists would say, well, you know, if you had to be an artist in this society, you'd be mad too. Um, <laughs> and there's certainly something about the artistic and creative lifestyle of, of missing a lot of sleep, perhaps using a few more drugs than one ought to and so forth. Uh, that might exacerbate it. But what we know from family studies, that, for example, if you look at Virginia Woolf, you look at Tennyson, you look at any number of people, the, they have long family histories. Byron, um, I mean, just there are probably 50 studies of this, of looking at family trees, that the madness way predates uh, the individual artist or writer. So in fact, it is fair to look backward at people who are now dead and confidently say, that they were, that they suffered from madness of some order? Well, I mean, I don't, confidence is a, is a strange sort of confidence, uh, concept, isn't it? I mean, I think you can say that we have a lot of studies now that are of living artists and writers, and that gives you more confidence than dead artists and writers. But one of the great things about studying writers, for example, is that they write, uh, and they write a lot. And you have medical records from asylums, you have, uh, a lot of information about when they first got ill. We know a lot about mood disorders. We know a lot about mania and depression. Um, so you can look at patterns, and, and so you can actually do it, and you can look at family history. They're very genetic illnesses. So there are all sorts of ways of doing it, but then there are study, studies of, uh, they're corroborated by looking at living artists and writers, and then there are a whole series of studies now looking very large population studies of 20,000 people in one study, 300,000 people in another study, 700,000 people in another study, and finding very, very disproportionate rates, particularly of bipolar illness, in highly creative occupations. So it's, it, there, there are different ways of studying it. But you're confident that there's a link? Well, confident, you know, I, I'm not oh, confident. I'm, a, I'm confident I'm going to die, and I'm confident right. at some point I'll probably be audited by the IRS, but confident. <laughs> um, you know, confident, confident, yeah, I'm, I, I would say if I had to bet on it, absolutely I would bet on that there's a, a pretty strong association, yeah.